Hey Majestic viewers, David here with another installment of The Short Stuff. Now, I love history, but more specifically, pirate history. That's right, pirate history. Now back during the golden ages of piracy in the Caribbean, there existed one man whose raids and exploits gave him fame, fortune, and respect. He was Captain Henry Morgan. He was a badass. I'm sure many of you recognize the name, but probably associate it with a night during your freshman year of college when you thought you were so cool and could drink all the spiced rum you wanted, only to end up on the floor of your dorm room next to a garbage can and later realizing in the morning that that garbage can was made out of wire mesh. Anyway. The year was 1669, and Morgan had just completed a successful raid on the city of Gibraltar. His plan was for him and his crew to escape through Lake Maracaibo through a narrow inlet into the Bay of Venezuela and onto the Caribbean. There was only one problem. Actually, make that three problems. The three Spanish man of war ships now patrolling the lake looking for Morgan. These three ships had way more firepower than anything in Morgan's fleet. He was in trouble. But fear not, Morgan and his crew were a clever bunch. They decided to take one of their ships and turn it into a fire ship, essentially making it into a giant bomb. They even went as far as to disguise it with logs painted black to look like cannons and taking branches and dressing them up in pirate clothes to make them look like it was a full crew manning it, ready for a large battle. Morgan then sent the fire ship with a 12-man crew to intercept the largest Spanish man of war. They were able to sail up right next to it and grapple onto it. Then, before the Spanish had any idea what was happening, they lit the fuse and jumped off the side. Then... Blam! Blam! Kablooey! The man of war caught on fire and was quickly abandoned by the whole crew. Morgan and his flagship then went to intercept the second largest Spanish man of war. However, seeing what happened to their largest ship, the Spanish feared that it was another bomb. So they tried to turn around and sail away, only to end up getting their ship stuck on a sand dune and completely abandoning it. Finally, the rest of Morgan's fleet were able to capture the third Spanish man of war. Morgan had quickly and decisively won the battle. However, they weren't out of trouble yet. The inlet they had to escape through to get to the Bay of Venezuela was guarded by a heavily reinforced and armed Spanish fort. But Morgan had another trick up his sleeve. From their position, the Spanish saw canoes traveling back and forth all day, dropping off men into a heavily wooded area near the fort. Seeing this, the Spanish moved all of their men and all of their cannons to the front of the fort, expecting a land assault. Yet, that attack was never going to happen. Every time a canoe went back to land to drop off reinforcements, the pirates were simply just laying down on the hull of the canoe, hidden from Spanish view. The Spanish assumed that there was a large army forming on land, but there was no one there. So, at night when the Spanish were expecting a huge attack, Morgan simply raised the anchors and slowly drifted through the inlet. When they hit the bay, they raised their sails before the Spanish had any idea what was even happening. They were home free. Captain Morgan was a badass. Of course, all the money they earned on that expedition, they quickly wasted away on booze and women, so they needed to plan something else. Stay tuned for part two.